Oh, today we're putting in this stage two shift kit. Parts you'll need is a new filter, which comes with a gasket. Uh, the shift kit itself, which also comes with a pan gasket. Some uh, transmission fluid, five liters, hopefully. If you need more, then we'll have to go and buy some other stuff. Um, and uh, also, not proudly sponsored by Mother. First off, jack up your car. Remember to use axle stands. Then drain all the oh, fluid out of the transmission. Push back, yeah. Uh, can you come to my side at all? Because we're leaking. Spill the fluid all over the floor. Remove your drive shaft. And unbolt your transmission. Now remove your oil pan. Have some rags ready to wipe up any spillage. Yeah. Remove the old filter, making sure the O-ring also comes out. Messy job. O-ring came off with it, so yeah. we're lucky. Awesome. I'm now taking out the factory torque converter in order to make way for the new one. Let's hopefully make jam a finger. Oh, and it's puking. And it's puking. Now remove all except for the centre bolt on the valve body. Now carefully undo the centre bolt and carefully remove the valve body, making sure not to drop any of the check balls in the valve body. Now it's time to remove the auxiliary valve body and the accumulator housing. The auxiliary valve also has a check ball, so be careful. Alrighty, so that's it. Yeah, beauty. The check ball, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell them a check ball. There's a spring! There is a spring. Make sure that that goes the right way. Now remove the separator plate, also watching out for more check balls mm. and springs from the accumulator. Let's see if we find all these bad boy check balls. One, two, three, four. Peel off the old gasket and give the separator plate a really good clean. Now follow the instructions of which three holes you need to drill out. Two holes are one eighth of an inch, while the last one is three thirty-two of an inch. <laughs> now knock out the roll pin that's holding in the MTV upshift valve. Once the pin is out, remove the aluminium plug, the MTV upshift valve, and the spring. Now discard the spring as it will not be reused. Now reassemble the MTV upshift valve in reverse order. Next up, remove the tapered roll pin that's holding in the line bias valve. Once that's done, remove the aluminium plug, the line bias valve, and the spring. Now discard the spring as we will be using the rod blocker that's in the kit. Now reinstall the line bias valve in reverse order. Next up, we'll be replacing the spring and the pressure regulator. To do so, pull out the circlip that's holding pressure on the TV boost valve. Now pull out the rest of the pressure regulator. Replace the original spring with the blue spring from the kit and reinstall the pressure regulator in reverse order. Pull 
Also replace the old circlip with the one in the kit, and make sure it is seated in the groove properly. Time to put everything back together. First off, remove the spring from the accumulator. Now fit the blue spacer between the housing and the accumulator piston. Place the check balls where they are meant to be located and then apply the separator plate fitted with the new gaskets. Put some of the screws in so the plate will stay in place. Now place the last couple of check balls. Gently place the valve body back into position. Place all the bolts back in by hand. Place both the red and the blue spacer in the second half of the accumulator and refit the piston. Refit the accumulator housing. and refit the auxiliary valve body with the check ball in the right spot. Now tighten all the bolts on the valve body, the accumulator and the auxiliary valve body to 11 Nm torque or 8 foot pound. Place all wiring how it was before disassembly and fit brand new filter as well as the new pan gasket do not use any sealant on the pan gasket place the pan back on the transmission and tighten up the bolts by hand Now tighten the oil pan bolts to 14 Nm or 10 foot pound. Now fit the new torque converter. Make sure to rotate it and that it's properly seated into the oil pump. Now reinstall the transmission, drive shaft and everything else that you took out. Refill the transmission, it took exactly 5 litres. And then rev it up like bam 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 and put it into D for maximum respect. Uh, the correct way is to start up the car, leave it idling, and just select each of the gears and make sure that they are doing what they're meant to be doing. You may notice the wheels will still spin in neutral. This is normal as the torque converter is still slightly engaged and is spinning the internals of the gearbox. You should be able to stop the wheels from spinning by hand. But do this carefully. Do not just grab hold of the wheel. Just place the palm of your hand gently on the wheel and see if it actually stops under light pressure. And now it's time to test it. Only have a major change since the last time was that we have shaved the heads and have increased compression as a result. Anyway, let's see what it does. <laughs>
13.48 at 103.8 miles an hour. It's a pretty nice improvement from some very basic mods. Anyway, we'll see you next time when we add some NOS and put some gears in that rear. Do it with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the car was really good. I'm about to do my <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <sighs> that looked kind of funny. You got a big hammer that's holding up the body and using the small hammer to tap the pin out. <laughs>